Dobar dan svima. Želim. Dobar dan. Ja bih vas zamolio samo ko prije svega da se samo ovaj mikrofoni ugase za sada, da ne bude nekakve mikrofonije, pa možemo onda krenuti. Ako nije problem. U redu. Dobar dan još jedan put svima. Ja sam Perica Rimac, predstavnik Prtke Belme 97. Većina sudionika me poznaje, a koliko vidim i ja poznajem većinu, tako da evo, družit ćemo se i danas. E, danas ćemo u suradnji sa našim partnerom tvrtkom Lex Solar organizirati prezentaciju pod nazivom Praktična upotreba gorivih čelija. I ujedno će to biti, će biti prezentacija novog proizvoda Lex Solar H2 Hydrogen Professional pa ćemo danas uživati u premijeri novog proizvoda. E, nadam se da ćemo svi zajedno nešto naučiti, bar ja se nadam kao i uvijek, tako da meni, me, za mene to dobro, dobro dođe. A, u četu sam napisao svoj mail. Pisao sam svoj mail i samo sekundu. I svi koji žele potvrdu o sudjelovanju, molimo ovaj, da mi pošaljete svoje podatke, da mi možemo ovaj, imati evidenciju, ovaj, ime, prezime, ustanova u kojoj radite i tako dalje. E, prezentaciju će voditi gospodin Dmitri Kušnikovski i što se mene tiče, ako neko nema nešto prije, neko pitanje, ako imate, samo recite, ako ne, možemo zamoliti gospodina Kušnikovskoga da, da krene. Mr. Kushnikovsky, uh, please start with the presentation. Okay, yeah. So let me just share my screen quick. Okay. So yeah, I hope you can see it. And, and let's get me started. Okay, so first, so first of all, um, good talk. Hello, Dobradan, and... Uh, of our presentation and on behalf of the Rexelar I would like to thank you and uh, as well as Gerrit and all our organization teams for today's uh, opportunity of, give, of giving a presentation and uh, especially introducing all, also our new product. Okay, so our topic for today will be hydrogen, so and especially the role of hydrogen in the 21st century. Uh, it's, uh, so how it's included into economics, technology and And my name is Nick, my name is Nick and I represent the product development here at Nexolab. Okay, so on this on this map you can, you can see what are currently is a... Just a moment, uh, I hear some... No, some uh, can you please turn off the microphone? Oh, yeah. Just a moment. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. Thanks a lot. Oh yeah. By the way, so also if if I speak too fast uh, uh, or too slow, so also please let me know because sometimes I may do it actually. Okay. Uh, so if, if you take a look on this map, you can you can currently see. What are the projects in the hydrogen in the hydrogen field are being realized all across the world? Uh, so as you can see, it's uh, actually quite a lot. Uh, so there are 228 of the announced projects, and these are only a medium and a large scale projects. So if we take into account uh, even even a smaller one, so we we are actually more than 1,000 of different projects right now planned or already being realized all ac all across the world. And Europe also leads uh, globally in the number of announced hydrogen products, uh, uh, so projects with, uh, with Australia, Japan, Korea, China, and, uh, and the US following uh, as additional hubs. So on all, from all of the projects, approximately 55% are right now located in Europe. So, and why is that, uh, you may ask? And the, the reason for it is because the Europe, uh, European Union announced its uh, environmental strategy, which is called the European Green Deal. Uh, so it's a, it's basically a strategy of uh, decarbonizing economics of, uh, of 
also also industry repla replacing the fossil fuels uh, reduction of the emission of the pollutants from cars from the in, from industrial application uh, also reduction of the greenhouse gases creating new jobs building new sustainable uh, sustainable buildings um, also and decoupling economics uh, from the fossil from the fossil fuel of course it's also quite ambitious strategy to be honest uh, but it, if you also take in mind uh, also keep in mind that it's actually backed up with a six six hundred billion euro investment plan from the next next generation Euro, uh, European Union recovery plan. That's actually quite a lot, and especially that this this uh, six hundred billion euro it's uh, only a one third part, which is also targeted uh, towards uh, a regeneration of the of the European Union. So, and what uh, the Green Deal. Uh, tells uh, tells us about hydrogen. Okay, uh, so in fact, a Europe, uh, European hydrogen strategy is also quite obvious. Uh, it prioritizes uh, hydrogen as an investment, so, um, so to be boosted as a uh, in order to boost the clean uh, hydrogen production in Europe uh, and to use hydrogen as a feedstock for for the industry, for example, for production of the ammonia methanol etc as a fuel in order to replace uh, already uh, already used um, fossil fuels uh, also to use it as an energy carrier mm, also for example for supplying heat or electrical energy uh, to conventional uh, to, the, to the buildings residential housing so uh, industrial power plants and also to use it as energy storage uh, and the strategy is, uh, well, to be honest, it's uh, quite ambitious. So, and uh, you may ask then, why, why is it why is it so hot topic, and uh, what kind of product, or what kind of projects uh, they are, in fact? What, one of the most ambitious, and in fact, the more the most realistic one, uh, is a is a pro is a project which is called a North H2. Uh, so it's taking place uh, in, in in the Netherlands and in particular in the North Netherlands in the province of Groningen. Uh, so what does it include uh, in uh, into its plan? It includes uh, creating uh, a lot, uh, so uh, a wind a wind power uh, wind power plan, an offshore one, so which is also which is also located uh, at the sea, and also create uh, at the same time also creating. Uh, an electrolysis, uh, so also coupling it with the electrolysis uh, setup uh, in order to create and uh, create hydrogen direct directly within this uh, wind farm ridge. And then this hydrogen will be later trans transferred to Emshafen, um, and from it, by using the current pipelines which are already uh, which are already installed, so it's uh, also will be. Uh, just a regular, just a regular gas pipe, uh, pipelines, which will be all also modernized. And with with this pipelines, uh, hydrogen can be transferred to the industrial regions in Netherlands, so uh, Northern Europe, as well as well as uh, you know Central Central Europe, and also to Germany, to the rural area, for example, which is also quite an industrial hub. It's a quite uh, an ambitious uh, project, as as I said, because it's planned to create. Uh, they plan to create. Uh, Four uh, four hundred gigawatt of power, so it's installed capacity by the year of 2030, uh, which is enough to supply three million uh, Dutch households already, and with a possible extension up to 10 gigawatts, so which will be enough for 12.5 uh, million of the households uh, in Netherlands. And I just want to remind you that the population of the Netherlands is 16 million people. So the energy will also be transferred all across uh, Europe, in fact. And uh, it's, uh, this project is also being realized as a consortium of uh, several companies, of the Gazunje, of uh, uh, Groningen Seaports, Equinor, RWE, also Shell, and it's also backed by uh, province of Groningen, Dutch government, and the European Union. Okay, and the question is, uh, why is it hydrogen? Why is it so hot topic? Why you did it receive so much attention in the past five to ten years? Uh, and the answer for it, uh, well, uh, because it's f first of all, it's quite a rebound uh, 
um, substance, so it's uh, it can be easily separated, can be easily synthesized. Uh, it's a it's a clean it's clean energy, so no greenhouse uh, gas, uh, no pollutants whatsoever can be made uh, can be made and uh, utilized as uh, as a water. So it can be made from water, and as a only emission, you also have water. So it's also a closed up circle uh, cycle. It has a higher energy density than, uh, than batteries when it's compressed, can be stored in various uh, different ways, uh, so as a liquid, as a gas, uh, or uh, as a solid hydro, as a solid metal hydrate, can be easily, well, relatively easily transported uh, and exported, can also be converted into different forms of energy, so into thermal energy, electrical energy, uh, chemical energy, uh, by for example, synthesizing ammonia or um, aromethyl cycl uh, cyclohexane, which can also later be used as a fuel. Uh, from the, it's also from the safety point of view, it's pretty much the same as a gas or as a, as a natural gas or a petrol. Uh, so it's also relatively safe, and it can provide uh, energy to all parts of the econ uh, economics. Okay. Um, so rephrasing um, John Orwell, well, all hydrogen is equal, but um, some some of the hydrogen is more equal than another one. Uh, and what does it mean? So in fact, uh, as as a result, we don't really care. Yeah? So what kind of hydrogen is that? So because uh, all of the properties are the same, so same high gravimetric energy density, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. However, what's also important for us is. Um, uh, is a source of it, a process, what what was used uh, in terms um, of minimizing our um, our emissions, uh, so possible CO2 uptake and etc. So there are several ways how we can, how we can generate hydrogen. It's uh, either by using electrolysis, uh, uh, so from so electrolysis of water. The best way how we can do it is, of course, to use a renewable energy as an, as an energy source. In this case, we get our green hydrogen, so no emissions, no air product, none whatsoever, our best way. Uh, we can also do a bio, uh, biochemical conver conversion of the biomass, um, which also leads to the same green hydrogen. Mm -hmm. uh, or we, we can also do a methan uh, pyrolysis, so basically a thermal decomposition of the meth of the methane uh, by using a reverse by using a renewable energy. In this case, so we get our uh, turquoise uh, hydrogen with only a solid carbon as a byproduct, or we can use also a fossil fuel um, with a methane pyrolysis or a methane reforming. And in this case, we get our gray, so-called gray hydrogen with a CO2 uh, emissions. And if we store the CO2 by a technique which is called carbon capture and storage, and sometimes carbon capture, storage, and utilization, uh, when the carbon is uh, CO2 is captured underground, we get our blue hydrogen. So with a also relatively high uh, conversion efficiency. Uh, in fact, there, are, there were only some of them. So, and um, the whole uh, color scheme of hydrogen is right now uh, quite quite a broad one. So, here you can see there is also like a pink, uh, brown, white, yellow hydrogen. Uh, they are not official definitions of colors, but they also kind of represent um, the industrial nomenclature, and they also quite commonly used. So, if you take uh, a look on the hydrogen production, however. Uh, we st we still can notice that uh, approximately 80% of our uh, um, generated hydrogen comes from the fossil fuels, and depending on the literature source you are using, uh, it's uh, only some, somewhere between 0.03% and up to 2% are actually come come from the electrolysis. However, what's also beneficial for the industry and uh, for the whole world, uh, electrolysis deployment is uh, expanding rather quickly. And if we are using uh, a low-cost uh, renewable energy, it will also boost uh, hydrogen production quite rapidly. We should also keep in mind that for a electrolysis process, uh, well, not for only electrolysis process, also for a hydrogen production, uh, what we are, what we always need is a water. Uh, 
And in fact, the water electrolysis has the smallest water footprint. Uh, and if we if we produce uh, hydrogen from a natural gas from from a steam reforming of the natural gas, uh, our water footprint is uh, is already doubled. And uh, if if we are using coal uh, coal as a fuel, then the water footprint is uh, is is quite enormous. So that's also should be take always taken into account um, in order to uh, so for for um, desi designing. Uh, Designing a way how how we can generate hydrogen. And uh, a second second uh, second point here it's also that the decarbonizing hydrogen production will require rapid electrolysis, and uh, we also may need to think uh, about uh, the ways how we how we can capture, store, and utilize the carbon dioxide, uh, which may come if we are not using electrolysis as a as a primary generation method. Okay, uh, so we already know that electrolysis is only a small part of the hydrogen production, but uh, there is, however, a planned uh, major shift to the low, uh, low carbon hydrogen production from uh, electrolysis or fuel, uh, fuels, uh, fossil fuels, technologies equipped with the carbon uh, capture and utilization and storage techniques. So, and according to different scenarios uh, from the uh, International Energy Agency, Mm, our demand and also a production of hydrogen may reach uh, around 500 mega, uh, megatons. Well, depending uh, depending on scenario, between 250 and 500 megatons uh, just in the nine years, which is uh, well actually somewhere between doubled and uh, sorry, uh, 250. Uh, so which which is doubled compared to what what we have today um yeah so and the uh, global installed electrolysis capacity is also is also climbing right now and it could climb up to 54 gigawatts of installed capacity uh, with uh, europe uh, also being a leader in this field and australia just uh, just a shy behind and also with uh, latin america and the middle east uh, going quite going quite extensively into this field and if all projects uh, that uh, I will also showed you at the first map uh, will be counted, then this capacity could even reach uh, 91%, uh, 91 gigawatt of the installed capacity by the year 2030. Okay. Uh, so one of the factors which can boost the hydrogen production, uh, electrolysis hydrogen production, it's of course the cost. Uh, of the renewable energy, because uh, right now the cost of the re renewable energy is still pretty high, and if we compare uh, what, what's uh, actually the price per kilo of hydrogen from different uh, from the different energy energy source and uh, just, uh, just from the different technology, is that the natural gas is uh, is of course the cheapest one and. Uh, uh, re renewables uh, show an increase of the factor of five uh, five to ten. In fact, uh, but it's also planned that installing of more, you know, the photovoltaic uh, stations and the wind uh, wind power plants uh, can in fact boost boost the electrolysis production of hydrogen and can reduce the cost of uh, approximately 60% by the year of 2030. Okay, we are going into the more well, rather technical uh, part of it. Uh, so yeah, we previously mentioned electrolysis, which is a chemical decomposition. Uh, a chemical decomposition. So it's an electrochemical process of uh, basically what what we do. We are splitting water uh, by applying um, by applying a voltage uh, above uh, the st above the standard potential. And uh, and the anode we also and the anode we see. Um, uh, our oxidation of water. Uh, sorry, that uh, at cathode we also see a, see, see a reduction. So, we, and uh, as, a, as a result, uh, so we also so we generate hydrogen and oxygen, which we can later on utilize. Okay, so uh, there are several methods uh, and several techniques uh, and several electrolyzers devices uh, that are currently used, which are alkaline uh, PEM. We are PEM states for the 
proton exchange uh, membrane or a polymer electrolyte mem uh, membrane and a solid oxide uh, electrolyzer cell. Uh, so they have different operation conditions, so uh, different efficiency, but all of them can find their own application. Uh, so yeah, and what we can uh, do with our generated hydrogen is, of course, we can also utilize it uh, in a fuel cells, which are electrochemical devices convert, uh, converting chemical energy, um, so of, of, uh, hydrogen enriched, uh, enriched fuels, which can be uh, also a natural gas, for example, or hydrogen itself, uh, into the electricity. So there are two main, um, well, there are actually more, uh, but I would like to show you two different um, working principles. So the first one, which is using uh, proton conductivity. So it's basically the same uh, PEM fuel cells that uh, I mentioned already. Uh, so, yeah. And the second, second one is uh, using a bit different uh, technique. So it's in fact based on the ion conductivity. And uh, this principle is used in the solid oxide fuel cells. Uh, which instead uh, of the polymer electrolyte or uh, liquid uh, electrolyte, they also they are also they are using a solid electrolyte. So th therefore, they also operate at a rather high temperatures, some somewhere between 600 and 1300 uh, degrees centigrade. <coughs> okay. So, uh, as I, as I also mentioned. Uh, there are, there are many more, so there is also an alkaline uh, fuel cell or uh, phosphoric acid fuel cell, molten carbonate fuel cell, solid acid fuel cell. Uh, some of these technologies are quite mature and already being used for, uh, for quite some time mm, in different applications, so as a backup power, uh, so for, this, uh, for the distribution of electricity. So if you have an interest, you can also have a look later on. Uh, but what's also important for us is that the application of hydrogen and uh, usage of hydrogen is uh, climbing and growing uh, of every, every, every single year. And also according to different scenarios from the International Energy Agency. Um, yeah, so uh, our, uh, our demand uh, and our application can can more than uh, more than be doubled. So, so in, in fact, in the announced pledge scenario, it can be uh, doubled, and with a net emission scenario. So when we also reach uh, um, a net, uh, so a zero emission point uh, to the year of 2050, which is uh, quite possible, but also quite optimistic. Um, in in this case, so our hydrogen. Hydrogen demand will be increased by the number, by the factor of five. So, as you can see, hydrogen is also currently used in different fields of uh, economics and industry. So, for the oil refining, for a, a syn chemical synthesis, uh, in a transport uh, transport sector. So, for the for cars, buses, uh, trains, planes, etc. So for also synthesis of the ammonia as a fuel, so it doesn't need to be <coughs> mistaken with a synthesis just uh, just on ammonia. So for example, which is also can be used uh, as a fertilizer, so directly or indirectly. Uh, in this case, uh, when we also use ammonia as a fuel, so the hydrogen is just like is, uh, converted into the ammonia or it also can be converted into the methyl cell cyclohexane which is easier which is more easy to transport which is also more easy to use later on uh, also it's uh, used for for supplying the energy into the uh, residential housings and can be also injected into the grid so, so in this case uh, it's actually blended with the natural gas uh, and uh, so the research also shows that uh, blending of approximately 6% uh, of the hydrogen doesn't have actually an influence on uh, on the available grid. 
so we are right here. Uh, but it also allows us to decrease uh, by approximately 6 to 10 percent the amount of the generated um, CO2. Okay, so we, we will focus, however, on uh, three, different, uh, three main topics um, of the hydrogen application, which are uh, the portable, uh, stationary, and uh, transport. And as you can see, it's uh, it's increasing also quite a lot. So with uh, with every year, and in fact, it's uh, so compare, uh, compared to, to 2014, mm, our install capacity in this uh, in this field uh, has increased already more than a factor of 10. And I would like to start with a fuel cell vehicles, or uh, in principle, just a, with a with a transport transport sector itself, uh, which is also one of the fastest uh, uh, growing growing fields uh, of the hydrogen application. So if you uh, if you take a look uh, on the distribution of the fuel cell vehicles in the world, you you may think that it's well it's it's right it's really a small amount. So uh, thirty five thousand at the end of two thousand twenty, approximately forty two thousand uh, by June two thousand twenty one. That's still that's still that's still really a small number. Yeah. So with a um, especially that uh, most of uh, such cars are also being used uh, in Asia or uh, in the United States. Uh, however, mm, the European Union is also aiming uh, for 4,000, 15,000 of uh, fuel cell electrical vehicles or uh, also sometimes uh, fuel cell, fuel, pure fuel cell vehicles uh, by the year of 2020, uh, 2013, which is already quite an increase. And with uh, also millions and millions more millions to come you know, by the year 2014 and 15. Uh, so what's actually good uh, for for the electric mobility in this case and for the mobility sector itself? So that there are already some commercially available cars uh, on the market like um, Toyota Mirai or uh, Hyundai Nexo, Honda Clarity. Um, what is, however, uh, limiting uh, uh, hydrogen as a fuel for the for the mobility sector is a limited number of the hydrogen refuel stations nowadays. But uh, so we also need to invest into the infrastructure before uh, before apply, uh, so before getting more and more vehicles in this field. So as a short comparison uh, of the electrical vehicles, um, the battery electrical vehicle and uh, fuel cell vehicle or a fuel cell electrical vehicle sometimes uh, it's that uh, well in, in both cases we use electricity as a fuel whether uh, in a case of electrical vehicle it comes from the battery and uh, in the case of the fuel cell vehicle it can it also can well it comes either from the battery or from the fuel cell uh, directly because there are also two different technologies which can be utilized so, so either it's uh, uh, just a range extender so hydrogen hydrogen tank is used as a range extender, or uh, it's also used as a primary uh, fuel. And uh, the fuel cell vehicles also offers so faster refueling, so it's also in the order of minutes. So, so basically, what we got used to by using a, a petrol, a regular petrol or a diesel cars, so it also has less weight than the battery electric vehicles due to the smaller battery. But it's also a bit less efficient uh, than a battery electric vehicles, and uh, they are also quite expensive right now. So with the prices starting uh, from 45,000 euros, for, if I'm not mistaken, uh, because the infrastructure is uh, still at the very beginning um, of its stage, uh, so they are also not. So many of cars produced uh, refueling stations are a bit of a problem, and um, we also still need to invest uh, into the development and and the mass production of such cars. However, a lot and a lot of car manufacturers are also going into this field. Um, so, uh, with uh, some of the well-known like uh, BM, uh, BMW or uh, Land Rover, Toyota, already mentioned, uh, as well as some startups or well they're not really startups uh, nowadays yeah so like uh, nicola 
which uh, have been developing uh, its uh, hydrogen track track uh, for quite some time from 2010 if i'm not mistaken 2012 and which are also planning to finally produce it uh, by 2000 by the year of 2023 <coughs> and uh, some of the smaller players and some of the bigger players However, the list is uh, already quite impressive and uh, more and more manufacturers will also join it uh, within the next five, uh, five to ten years, uh, assuming the number of uh, money which are being invested into this field. Okay, uh, so the next uh, possible application of the hydrogen are portable devices, uh, so which are basically either charged up uh, by the hydrogen so by the energy generated from uh, hydrogen so they are relatively small scale devices so they're not so powerful so with a power range from approximately 1 to 20 kilowatts and um, most of them are also used already familiar to us uh, pm uh, fuel cell or some uh, some of them more exotic and use uh, so direct uh, methanol or uh, solid oxide fuel cells. And what's also quite interesting is that, uh, in fact, hydrogen found an application in the military sector. So, so for the portable uh, soldier bone power and uh, generators, uh, also for uh, these uh, drones. Uh, because of the less weight and uh, also higher range, which can be reached uh, with the hydrogen uh, instead of using uh, just uh, just an electrical batteries. And a uh, next uh, next application uh, in this case is a stationary, so where we can use hydrogen as a fuel. Uh, so to heat uh, to heat in buildings, so which I already mentioned that we can. Uh, blend uh, um, hyd hydrogen with with a with a with a gas that we are currently using in the households, or uh, hydrogen also can be used uh, for uh, power generation and electrical storage, and for example, as a uninterruptible power supply, so as a backup uh, power supplies as well. So for uh, in order to produce and off-grid uh, electricity um, also for um, as a kind of a permanent uh, auxiliary power units uh, so to, uh, to be used uh, in cars, trucks, um, etc. And there's also some uh, somewhere in between of the portable, usually from the portable and um, in terms of the power range between portable and the uh, transport uh, fuel cells. Okay, so I guess at uh, this point I will uh, like to summarize uh, our first part. So as you can see, hydrogen is a quite promising, uh, prom promising energy source. Uh, it's a non-toxic. It's uh, it's quite universal, so it can be also easily converted into different sorts of uh, energy. It's uh, good for the environment, especially. Uh, Due to the also climate agreement, uh, so that we should minimize and uh, minimize our carbon carbon footprint and probably reach uh, zero emission by the year of 2050. And it's also boosting uh, an industry and technology. Uh, so due to the rapid um, technological development and um, technological innovation, what is of this? Uh, so what's the disadvantages of using hydrogen? However, it's uh, it's a bit difficult and actually uh, to compress us um, and to liquefy. So we didn't uh, really um, discuss this moment, but uh, it it is so. So production cost is uh, still uh, rather expensive, and uh, as well as the conversion cost. Uh, in this case, converting hydrogen into a different uh, chemical substance, and uh, logistics will do need to require some serious investments uh, because it also means that 
account uh, pipelines are either need to be modernized uh, because the hydrogen also use a, a smaller diameter pipe than the gas one or we need to build a new pipelines uh, or if uh, trucks are also used uh, for logistics uh, there also needs to be uh, so there also needs to be spe uh, specific trucks okay and at this point i will move uh, to our second part where i would like to present to you some of the products uh, that we also have uh, in the hydrogen field uh, so as you may know uh, we actually specify uh, so our area of expertise is not just a hydrogen so we are most we are mostly focused on the renewable energy sector and we have uh, products in all of the renewable energies starting from the photovoltaics, thermal energy, smart grid, so hydropower, bioenergy, biofuel, wind energy, and also hydrogen. Uh, so we have products uh, covering all, all educational process, so starting from the elementary school up to the high school, TVET sector, so TVET stays for a technical vocational educational training, and some of the products can also be used in uh, at university, colleges, uh, etc. Mm, so, yeah. and our professional series is uh, is dedicated pro is dedicated some um, product line for uh, technical training, uh, vocational training, uh, training at universities, colleges, and some of the ready-to-go products can also be used uh, for the same purpose. <coughs> Okay, so I would like to start with uh, uh, our first product in this field, which is called Alexa H2 ready to go. So, which is also an experimental system of the fuel cell uh, fuel cells technologies, so which uh, has right now two different uh, cell technologies. It's a PEM and direct uh, ethanol fuel cells. It also covers uh, some aspects like uh, hydrogen storage, producing of hydrogen, and so on. I would like, however, more focus on our of its on its uh, elderly brother, uh, which is a uh, H2 Professional 2.0. So, which is our latest uh, product in the uh, in the hydrogen uh, branch hydrogen fuel. So, it's 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 mostly also designed for the same target group. However, it's uh, has more powerful electrolyzer, so it's a comprehensive experimental system on the hydrogen fuel cell technology. It does have a PEM fuel cell stack. So when students can also work um, so with a fuel cell stack are from one cell up to five different cells. We can also generate on a green hydrogen, which uh, I will also demonstrate to you today. And also point of hydrogen storage, uh, metal hydrate uh, is uh, also discussed. Okay, so I think I will skip this one because we will see what we have in the case uh, in detail just uh, in a couple of minutes. And um, yeah, so there are also some, well, of course not some, but uh, around 15 different Okay, yeah, less. Uh, 13 different experiments uh, uh, included uh, with this kit. Um, so we can do some basic uh, photovoltaic experiments. Uh, we can also play uh, with electrolyzer and with a fuel, and with a fuel cell. Okay. Next, uh, the next product uh, which is currently coming as a as an addition. So as a, as a separate one, uh, which is a hydrogen solid oxide fuel cell. So, which is a microtubular solid oxide fuel cell, which is a direct flame. So, this one is a direct flame, meaning that we don't need uh, any furnace or uh, additional he uh, heating element uh, because we use uh, liquid propane, propane gas, uh, uh, or propane butane mixture uh, as a both so fuel source and a heat source. And it does have a rapid startup uh, time, you know, the, well, a couple of seconds really, um, uh, as well as the shutdown time. And uh, it 
can withstand uh, more than well several hundred cycles at least and the next one which is uh, also a bit which is even a more complex and uh, more advanced product uh, which we called LXLR H2 Expert which uses a more powerful uh, fuel, cell, uh, fuel cell stack uh, which is also based on the proton exchange membrane uh, membrane uh, with a power output of uh, 20 watts and 12 volts uh, which is also equipped with a controller with dedicated uh, web server so uh, it can either be operated by using a controller or by uh, using your uh, device uh, and it's coming sometime in 2022 so probably a second quarter of it okay so and at this point I would like to stop and just let me switch my uh, cameras real quick so that we can go also to the demonstration So yeah, Let's just give me a second a bit small technical issue. case so just the next uh, H2 professional so 2.0 uh, which is an updated version of our professional one um, also which has been redesigned uh, so according to our new style okay so let's open it up and uh, have a look what we have inside and what we can actually do with it so and it's of course as uh, in board as in all of our pr products, uh, it does have a, a base unit, which, which is a professional one, which can accommodate up to four different modules. So to, to those of you who are not really familiar with uh, our products, so we, we kind of use this model of structures, yeah, so which uh, some, uh, most of the parts are like this model, so they can be easily plugged into the base unit and uh, we are actually good to go and we can perform some of, some of the experiments. So, it does have an updated uh, uh, electrolyzer, so which we'll also be using today. A solar cell so that they can also generate a green hydrogen and a new fuel cell stack so in fact it's a, so it's a five cell stack which can also be easily adjusted uh, so from somewhere so from one from the one cell up to five different cells so also because uh, uh, the cells can be easily screwed to the strong screws and uh, yeah so the students can also understand and find the dependency of the power output and uh, so depending on the cell configuration so it also has an electrical uh, a small electrical car inside it also has uh, a hydrogen storage, so this metal hydrate storage operating on the 30 bars, which is well quite a lot of for us here. So that's why we also have this uh, single step, uh, one step pressure regulator. So 
Som jag om jag har sunnit för jag har man är med för jag. I think that we can probably start something. So I will just uh, demonstrate to you its functionality. So how can we can perform uh, electrolysis today? Uh, so by using two different methods, how we can. Mr. Kushnikovsky, I don't hear your voice now. Can you check, please, uh, what is happening? Okay, can you, uh, since so uh, which part uh, can you can't hear me? Yeah, now it's okay. Okay, okay, good. Thank you. Yeah. So, okay, interesting. For some reason, it just uh, it went to the mute. Okay. Anyway, so I, I hope you can see. Uh, I, I hope you can hear me, and I hope you have missed anything. So yeah, uh, as the first one, yeah, sure. We, of course, we, we will fill our ele electrolyzer with a with some distilled water, so it can accommodate up to uh, 80 milliliters of water. So we can just So of course this also does have a gradual scale, so the students can do some quantitative as well as qualitative experiments. Okay, that should be enough. And then okay, then we also need to install. This compensation tax, because while we will be generating hydrogen and oxygen, so it will also push our water outside. And uh, so the students can also see uh, an expected two to one relation. A uh, relation between hydrogen and oxygen. Okay. So yeah, we have this one. And I will also use a one because well, obviously we are in Germany, so we don't get much sun right now. So I will need some light source in order to start up our solar cell. Mr. Kushnikovsky, now it's again, there is no voice. That's quite interesting. So for some, for yeah. some reason, it's, <laughs> it's been muting itself. So yeah, anyway. Okay, now it's okay. Okay, uh, yeah, so I hope you haven't missed anything. So uh, 
Yeah, we already set, set, set it up, so it, uh, it works. You can, see, you can see some also bubbles uh, arising and, uh, and pushing, pushing our water, so uh, pushing our water up. However, uh, to be quite honest, um, the green hydrogen production method in this case, it's uh, rather, oh, it's, not so, it's not so fast. Uh, let me say so. Yeah, we probably need to, uh, for just for just for the sake of time, we will we, we will need to use another one. So we will use our power module, which is uh, a bit more powerful. So yeah, we, we can we can uh, we can supply it with a more voltage and more current in order to generate our hydrogen faster. So yeah, but uh, so as, as a demonstration and in principle, it's it's it actually works quite quite well, yeah. But it's, it just takes a bit a bit of time, so somewhere between five and ten minutes uh, at least. So to so to generate it. So yeah, we we will need uh, to rearrange a couple of things. So we will right now we'll be using our power module. Okay, so the, the, the circuit is organized in such a way that it's uh, uh, our power module is connected to the grid, and then the voltage is adjusted. Uh, so we will not be using more than I think five. Well, four volts is actually more than enough in this case. Okay, so yeah. uh, we, we we can see that it's uh, it's actually much faster right now. So so let let's leave it up. Let's leave it like this. But let's just generate some hydrogen first of all. And in the meantime, we can have a look on our fuel cell stack. So as I mentioned, it can be it can be powered up uh, so in two different ways. Actually, store some hydrogen because so yeah, we can either use our electrolyzer, so this uh, two tanks because they also represent a storage function of our hydrogen and oxygen, or we can, or we can use uh, our metal hydrate storage and power and power it up directly. So yeah, let me just prepare it first and foremost. Okay. So yeah, you, you can you can already see that the water is so that the water level has changed, and in fact, it's uh, it's around two to one ratio between between. So you too, but so so much is bad. So you know, our Preko Teamsa blokirano na na lab. A ima opcija ideš na zvučnik, na neki drugi uređaj i na na Bluetooth ključ.
Mr. Kushnikowski, one more time. <laughs> Please. That's really interesting. I don't know why it's happening. <laughs> I'm, I'm quite curious. <laughs> okay. So yeah. But but as you can see, our electrolysis works works just well. So the water is also the water level is changing, and we can in fact uh, well use use our fuel cell right now. Yeah. So we will start probably then with a. I think that should be enough. I will start, however, with, a, with our hydrogen storage, so in order to power it up directly. And we can, so that we can also investigate the efficiency of our fuel cell, because there are also a couple of experiments uh, where we can calculate the Faraday efficiency, the electrical efficiency of our fuel cell. So yeah, with this uh, one-step regulator, we can also decrease our pressure, because we will need around 0.5 for our fuel cell. Let's flash it real quick, and um, at the end we are getting somewhere around five five volts right now, which is exactly what we we what we are expecting from this stack. So there are five cells uh, with a nominal voltage of around 0.9 volt per cell. So yeah, which is in principle a quite uh, good result. So it's one of the ways how we can how we can use it. So either with a with our metal hydrate storage, or we or we can use our electrolyzer as, as well. So we can also investigate the properties of our fuel cell. So finding, for example, IV IV characteristics. meaning that we can also find our maximum power output from it. So by, by adjusting the potentiometer, we can also get our voltage, we can also get our uh, current values, uh, and, and so on. So in order to, to find our maximum power that, that we can get with, uh, with this fuel cell. As the second alternative uh, is our already mentioned, we can also use our electrolyzer as a hydrogen source. So all we just need to do is to plug, is to plug it up. And open, open it up and yeah. And it works. So in principle, also as as expected. Also, one of the experiments are, um, and we can also see a dependency between um, an oxygen supply. So meaning we can we can do something like this. We can we can place it up. Uh, and 
and uh, because the hydrogen supply holds uh, oxygen supply uh, also comes from, comes from the air, so it's applied indirectly from the air, meaning that the op oxygen uptake is also uh, is also not constant. I mean, it's constant; it's it's, it's relatively constant. But but we can also force it in order to uh, supply more oxygen to it and uh, to produce more power. So we can also investigate this dependency by by using our fan. So we can see so called the fireplace effect. Yeah, so when the oxygen uptake is actually coming uh, coming like this and then directly to the cells. And we and we will also see some uh, differences in uh, voltage and current output uh, depending on the depending on the way how we supply oxygen to it. So with and without fan. And I guess on this part, I would like to stop uh, in order to be right on time. So yeah, but uh, just also just the last one. So what we what, what we can also do? So we can mount our fuel cell uh, onto this model vehicle, and we can power power it up so directly with our fuel cell and uh, our hydrogen storage. And as this at this point, I would like to stop. And get back right here. Okay. Thank you very much for the excellent presentation, Mr. Kushnikovsky. Thank you. You will be able to see the presentation of this product and the other ed educational sets live at the professional meeting of the new energy days in January, which we will shortly present. Okay, uh, Mr. Kushnikovsky, I will set something on creation to and uh, okay. Uh, kao što sam rekao, ovaj, gospodin Kushnikovsky. Tvrtka Lex Solar uh, će 20, na našem eventu koji ćemo održati 26. do 28. prvoga u Poreću imat ćemo stručni skup pod nazivom New Energy Days, uh, dane novih energija gdje će 10 eminentnih hrvatskih stručnjaka imati predavanja za temu beza, uh, nove energije. Između ostalog će biti i gorive čelije i hidrogen i tako dalje. Doga, uh, osim toga Znači imat ćemo ovaj, radionice obnovljivih izbora energije, mobilnosti, uređaj za ispitivanje zrakovne propusnosti, blower, tzv. blower door. I uz nas kao organizatora bitna je prisutnost i velika podrška naših partnera koji će predstaviti svoju najnoviju opremu iz spomenutih područja. Tako da evo, to sam iskoristio jednu priliku ovaj, da promoviram naš događaj na kojem će sudjelovati, o, sudjelovati između ostalih tvrtka Lex Solar, pa u četu imate link sa naše stranice gdje možete vidjeti, iza mene se isto nalazi plakat, pa možete pogledat malo i provjeriti da li škola, škola valjda bude nekoga poslala na, na edukaciju i tako, pa ćete vidjeti. Osim toga imate još i moj mail u četu uh, za potvrde o sudjelovanju, pa tako da ovaj, bi vas zamolio, znači kogod, ko želi potvrdu da mi samo pošalje ime, prezime i podatke vaše ustanove gdje radite i to je to. Ako ima neko neko pitanje, evo, sad slobodno recite dok je gospodin Kušnikovski tu. So if there are any questions, we can probably also try to answer them. Hey, you speak Croatian, as I see, <laughs> because uh, my uh, I, 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 I said I said I minutes ago that uh, okay, thank you. Ako nema niko. A kažem ako nema niko pitanja nikakva ja vam se onda zahvaljujem. Još jedan put na sudjelovanju i do sljedeće prilike. Tako da evo, lijep, ugodan dan želim i lijepi, lijepi pozdrav svima.